Hi there, in this video we'll take a quick look at Ghost Inspector. So Ghost Inspector is an automated testing service that allows you to easily set up automated tests that will check your website or web app and interact with it the same way a real person would. So there's two ways to build tests. One is through the test editor and the other is through our web browser extension which is available for Chrome and Firefox. And I already have the extension installed in, in my version of Chrome and I'm already logged in. And you can see the icon here at the right. So I am going to be testing the purchase flow on this website is a demo website that we created specifically for these demos and testing, but it is fully functional. And I'm going to be create, I'm going to be testing the purchase flow. So I'm going to click on the extension icon and I have these two options. I want to, one of them is to create a new test and the other one is to add to an existing test. So if I have an existing test, I can select it from, from the list and add and select where I want to add these additional steps to. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new test. And then once I hit record, Ghost Inspector is keeping track of all the actions that I'm taking. So that's anything from left clicks, right clicks, anything that I drag and drop. If there are any new URLs open during the test in a new window or a new tab, Ghost Inspector is going to keep track of all those. So I'm going to he go here and mimic a visitor on this website and I'm going to click on this icon or this this item and if I click on the browser icon or the extension icon again I have additional options so right now I'm recording my operations which are my steps and now I can switch to make assertions so I have this this crosshair now as my cursor and I can hover over any element any over any text L, uh, images and I can make sure that my website is behaving the way I expect it to. So I want to make sure that my add to cart button is there. So I'm going to click on it to assert and it says assertion recorded. I'll switch back to recording my operations and I'll actually add it to the cart. I'll jump into the cart. I could add another assertion here if I wanted. Uh, but another one of the options is I can capture screenshot. I can capture screenshot at any point of the test. And these screenshots are used for reference. And I'm going to do that here. Although by default, at the end of every test, Ghost Inspector takes a screenshot. When the test runs again, those two screenshots are going to be compared if they differ significantly, depending on your settings, which you can adjust the tolerance for. The test will fail and then it'll let you know. So, But here I'm going to take a screenshot manually. Screenshot step recorded. I'll switch back to, or I'm, uh, I'm back to recording operations. And any characters that I type into these input fields will be uh, tracked by Ghost Inspector. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to pre-fill them. And note the email address here. So I can I can check emails that are sent by my website or web app with Ghost Inspector as long as I send them to a unique username at email.ghostinspector.com. And I can open these emails in the browser and check them the same way I'm checking this, this website. So I'll go ahead and pay. I get another assertion here too. But for now, I'm going to uh, actually, I'm going to check accessibility. That's one of the other options here. So um, Ghost Inspector can check that your website is servicing folks that might be visually impaired or blind that are visiting your website. That means that there's enough contrast between your elements, your font and your buttons and links are, are appropriate size and spaced uh, appropriately. So I'm going to do that here on this page. OK, accessibility step recorded. And now I'll finish creating this test. I'll just give it a name. Select where I want to save it. So a suite is a way to group test. And I do want to execute an initial test run. Once I hit save, all these steps are being packaged. They're sent to our servers in the cloud. We're opening an automated browser and Ghost Inspector is going through the steps or at least trying to go through the, ste through the steps the same way I just did. And if it can't, for whatever reason, it's going to let me know before my users do. So. Let's go ahead and view the test. It might still be running and it should take another few seconds. But while it's running, we can see that it's running on this version of Chrome, this resolution and from our Virginia geolocation, which are defaults. And all these can be customized. I can add multiple versions of Chrome and Firefox, multiple resolutions and multiple uh, geolocations. So we see that it, it finished running. We see some general information about the test and we see that it passed. So. Uh, on the left here, we have the steps, which are pretty self-explanatory. We have our clicks. We have uh, the assertions that I made on the add to cut planter text, all the way down to the screenshot that we took manually 
and it I can see that it did pass the accessibility check. So on the right, every test by default has a video and this video is of Ghost Inspector going through the steps, not, not the steps that I did when I recorded the, the test. So well, the cool thing is that, uh, of several cool things, you can see the step that the, that the action is, is being performed on. So here we can see that step three, we asserted that the add to cup, sorry, the add to cart link is there. Uh, so we highlight any actions, any clicks, assertions in this green color. So you can easily see what's happening or what the test is, what the test is doing and in what step that is happening on. So for, for a short test, I, I like to pause it and go through it manually. And I can see the, uh, the steps all the way down to the, to the end of the test. Now, uh, below is our screenshot. So this is the baseline screenshot. So this is the, the baseline, meaning that other screenshots from other test runs are going to be compared to this one. And they and if they differ significantly, default is 10% tolerance. Uh, Ghost Inspector is going to let me know by failing that screenshot test comparison. Um, and for example, here, my confirmation number, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's dynamic. It's going to be different for each test run. So Ghost Inspector might, uh, will pick up, actually, it, it Ghost Inspector will pick up. Um, it is a pixel by pixel comparison, so it'll pick up the difference, but it might be two or three percent. If it's if my tolerance is, as, is set at 10, it's going to pass. So a link to our API access and full documentation. And below here, uh, you can add comments for yourself or for teammates. So here we have our test run history, which is kept on our servers for six months. If you need it longer than that, you can download it as a CSV. So we've only ran this test once in one environment. So there's only one entry here, but if we run it on Chrome 106, Chrome 105, and a few versions of Firefox, each of those environments will have their own entry here. So I can open these in a new tab. And this is the test results for this environment. Same thing, I have my steps uh, uh, here on the left, my video and my screenshot. Um, so, and speaking of tests, sorry, speaking of steps, I can edit my steps in the test editor. So I can build a test from scratch using this editor. Or uh, if I have an existing test, I can edit them. That means I can add steps, I can remove them, I can move them around um, or add, add conditions. So I'll go back to the test and I'm gonna jump into the settings now. Lots of options. Pretty standard settings here. Uh, the name, where I want to save it. I can add the description, and they, I can enable a status badge, which means I can create a, a custom report where I can see at a glance what's passing, and schedule. I can set most of the settings at the suite level, and then, like I mentioned, a suite is a way to group test. So if I have a my demo suite here, and if I have a number of tests in there, I can have those tests inherit those settings set in there, or I can overwrite them at the test level, which I can do here. So no schedule means that the test will need to be uh, triggered manually or through the API, or I can select one of these options. Advanced schedule lets me choose a day or days of the week down to the minute. So browser access, I can add, here's where I can add multiple versions of, uh, of Chrome and, and Firefox that I, that I wanna run my test on. So language setting, if my, my, my website shows a, a specific language based on the Browser setting, I can do that here. If it needs a, cust a, a an actual iPhone or, or mobile device to show the responsive mobile version, mobile version, I can add a user agent string here. And if it's behind the login, like staging or development, I can add those details there. Step timing, I can add additional step, uh, a step delay uh, between each step, or I can add a, a delay uh, before it, it times out and if it can't find an element. Same thing with the final screenshot. I can have it wait up to 30 seconds before it takes that final screenshot, just to make sure everything's loaded. Display options, a lot of options around the visual capture, which is the video and screenshot uh, of the test. I can enable or disable that here. Here's where I can select multiple resolutions. We have uh, mobile resolutions, uh, uh, tablets, and all, all, all the way uh, down to large desktop resolutions. Here's where uh, I can enable or disable that comparison with, of the screenshots and I can adjust the tolerance. So uh, by default, it's at 10%. If I want my screenshots to always be identical and know if they're not, I would set it to zero. If I wanna target a specific area of my website for a screenshot, uh, I can add the CSS or XPath selector for that element. 
and at the same in the same way i can uh, exclude certain areas of of my website or web app in that screenshot by by adding the css or expat selector here in the, in the exclusion field geolocation all these uh, correspond to our aws servers we do make the ip addresses public in case you need to whitelist them in uh, in your fire firewall or need, want to see that uh, the traffic is coming from ghost inspector in, in your analytics data sources i can I can add a, a CSV file with column names that correspond to variables that I use in my test. And as long as the, the, the variable and the column name correspond, Ghost Spectre is going to know what to do with it as if I associate uh, the corresponding CSV file with the test or at the suite level. Modularization, I can import steps from a test into another, another test. And that means if I have my login steps in one step, sorry, in one test, which we recommend it because if you're using it in, in more than one, uh, more than one test, it'll be easier to import if you need to make, uh, make changes to those login steps. So it helps with uh, maintaining tests. Um, and you can do that through the, through the test editor by selecting importing steps from another test, uh, as one of the options, external links that adds an external link at the top of at the top of every test, this, this could be this could be a a link to a Jira or Trello issue, even though we do integrate directly with with Jira. And some miscellaneous steps: if there are any JavaScript errors in the in the browser console, I can tell Ghost Inspector to to fail the test, uh, even if functionality and screenshot comparison is passing. Or I can say, hey, just keep going. SSL certificates, I can accept them or deny here, and then test auto retry. If my test has passed at least two times before, but if it, and it fails, I can say, hey, just try it one more time. And if it fails a second time, let me know. Or at any time it fails, regardless of how many times it has passed, you can uh, the test will fail right away and let you know. And then notifications, a lot of options uh, for notifications. So we have email alerts, which you can add different email addresses separated by a comma. Uh, so that, that's if there's a there's a team member that is not in here creating and running tests you can add their email addresses here and control when uh, those email alerts are going uh, are going out webhooks available for for notifications as well as microsoft teams and slack integration for example with slack if enabled you can add multiple channels that are that these alerts are going to go to and include those screenshots in the slack alerts which if somebody's on the go or even on just on their desktop slack app they can see those screenshots without having to go into their the ghost specter account and they'll be able to see at a glance what's going on with those tests so uh, that's it if i were to save my changes uh, and run this test uh, i would be all set so uh, we have a lot of more information on our getting started section in, in our documentation and that's a quick look at Ghost Inspector. Thank you for watching.